This presentation is on waste stabilization ponds in Europe. Europe is often considered to be too cold for waste stabilization ponds. Many European countries experience cold winters and warm summers, so natural systems require much longer retention times to complete the treatment process. However, in Quebec, in Canada, where the temperatures are far colder than those in Europe, this pond system, designed to allow for temperature extremes, functions particularly well. Germany experiences a similar climate to that in the UK. In Bavaria, in southern Germany, there are around 1,500 waste stabilisation pond systems which make up 50% of Bavaria's wastewater treatment plants. This slide shows a small waste stabilisation pond system in Bavaria in the village of Berg near Munich. It serves a population of 250 people and operates satisfactorily all year round, despite mean January temperatures falling to minus 2 degrees Celsius. The Berg Pond system is designed That's to present. meet local water quality requirements whilst taking into account the cold winters, warm summers and high levels of rainfall throughout the year. This is the first pond in the series. It is an anaerobic pond and is used for primary treatment of raw wastewater. This system has two anaerobic ponds operating in parallel. This is the secondary facultative pond, which follows the anaerobic pond. The majority of BOD and suspended solid removal occurs in the anaerobic pond and this pond. At the far end of the secondary facultative pond is an integrated reed bed. This is planted with typha. This photograph was taken in November, so the typha has died back. It will begin to grow again in March or April. The effluent from the reed bed channel flows along a specially designed outlet channel and percolates through an infiltration bed before flowing along an effluent channel to the lake of Starnberg. This slide shows the difference between capital and operation and maintenance costs for various wastewater treatment processes in Germany in 1996. The capital cost of waste stabilisation ponds is half that of constructed wetlands and one-third that of activated sludge. Similarly, waste stabilisation ponds offer the cheapest alternative in terms of operation and maintenance costs. These figures are based on small communities of 500 population equivalents. German pond design criteria published in 2003 states that a German pond system should consist of an anaerobic pond at least 1.5 metres deep and a secondary facultative pond 1 metre deep. These two ponds require a total land area of 8.5 square metres per person. Alternatively, a primary facultative pond can be used instead of these two. It requires 10 square metres per person and is 1 metre deep. Obviously, this is a less favourable option since land can be hard to obtain and can also be expensive. The next European pond system we will look at is situated in the south of France. Mez is a small tourist town near Montpellier. The waste stabilisation pond system treats the wastewater from the town and discharges into the sea. The final effluent has to be high quality due to the close proximity of oyster beds, the oysters from which are used for human consumption. This slide shows another waste stabilisation pond system in Brittany, in northwest France. It is one of up to 3,000 French systems, most of which are for populations below 1,000. This slide shows the difference between capital and operation and maintenance costs in France in 1998, based on communities of 1,000 population equivalents. The capital cost of waste stabilisation ponds is approximately half that of activated sludge and two-thirds that of constructed wetlands. 
Despite this, it has become more common for French designers to use constructed wetlands rather than ponds in recent years. This document, published in 1997, outlines French design criteria for waste stabilisation ponds. It states that a waste stabilisation pond system should consist of a primary facultative pond at 6 square metres per person, followed by two maturation ponds at 2.5 square metres per person each. This amounts to a system requirement of 11 square metres per person and is slightly larger than the equivalent German system. Now we will move on to waste stabilisation ponds in the UK. There are only around 40 waste stabilisation ponds in the UK and all but two are privately owned. The UK water companies do not use waste stabilisation ponds for wastewater treatment unless they are specifically requested by the landowner. Our inexperience of appropriate pond design in the UK has resulted in a few strange designs. This system at Tymore Trossachs in Perthshire, Scotland, serves the house you can see in the top photograph, plus some holiday apartments. The final wastewater quality after the waste stabilisation ponds has to be of a high standard, since it flows into the pristine Loch Acre. This is a photograph of a pond system in Bottom Village in North Yorkshire. The system was commissioned in 1997 and it was designed for 240 people. It consists of a facultative pond and two maturation ponds. More recently, a wind-powered aerator has been installed to facilitate mixing in the top 30 centimetres of the facultative pond. This prevents the pond from going stagnant and maintains the conditions necessary for essential algae to survive. Consequently, rock filter channels separating the maturation ponds into smaller ponds have also been installed to remove surplus algal solids before discharge into a stream. This is a Google Earth image of Eschalt Wastewater Treatment Works in Bradford, Yorkshire. It is a conventional trickling filter works which treats the wastewater of 620,000 people. It is the largest trickling filter wastewater treatment works in Europe and it accepts wastewater from both domestic and industrial sources. At Eschalt there is a small pilot scale pond system which is owned and operated by Leeds University. It is a purely experimental system which takes a portion of the raw wastewater from the sewage works, treats it in a waste stabilisation pond system and then simply returns the final effluent to the works for conventional treatment. The system comprises three facultative ponds in parallel, each receiving raw sewage from the treatment works. Each pond is operated at a different loading rate to establish the optimum loading for ponds in the UK climate. The effluent from the facultative ponds is pumped into a series of two maturation ponds and a reed bed channel. The ponds have now been monitored since 1999. A range of loading rates were investigated and the results from the facultative ponds suggest that a loading rate of 80 kilograms of BOD per hectare per day is the optimum for ensuring good performance in the UK. This is similar to findings in France and New Zealand for ponds operating in similar climates. The resulting effluent BOD and suspended solid concentrations comply with the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive and meet the Environment Agency's requirement of no more than 40 mg of unfiltered BOD and no more than 60 mg of suspended solids per litre of effluent. However, the ammonia concentration in the facultative pond effluent was between 20 and 25 mg per litre in the winter and around 10 mg per litre in the summer. This is considered to be a relatively high concentration of nitrogen and the wastewater would require further treatment before discharge. This slide shows the entrance to Scraingham Ecological Wastewater Treatment Works near York in North Yorkshire. 
It is the only waste stabilisation pond system in England to be owned and operated by a water company, since it was specifically requested by the landowner. The facultative pond is the first pond in the series and covers an area of 1,300 square metres. It is designed at a loading rate of 80 kilograms of BOD per hectare per day, based on the research carried out at Eschalt on the pilot scale experimental ponds. The facultative pond outlet consists of an integrated limestone rock filter, which serves to prevent loss of algae from the pond via the outlet weir. It will also help to filter out any suspended solids from the water column. The effluent from the facultative pond flows through the outlet weir and into a series of five shallow maturation ponds. Each pond is only 40 centimetres deep and is separated from the next with limestone rock divides. After the final maturation pond, there is another outlet weir which navigates the flow into a purpose-built fish pond. The fish pond is the final pond in the series and serves no treatment purpose. It is simply there for the recreational use of the final effluent. The outlet structure is again a weir which then leads to an inspection chamber which then flows out to the River Derwent. This natural system has won several awards for its treatment capabilities and sustainable technology. The awards have come from both the engineering and construction industries and praise has been given to the environmentally sound design which attracts many species of birds and insects. The Scraingham Ponds have proved to be a great asset to Yorkshire Water.